the DNC silences Palestinian voices. A group of pro-Palestinian Democrats said their request for a speaking slot at this week's Democratic National Convention has been denied by party leaders. The uncommitted delegates were hoping as late as Wednesday evening that a Palestinian-American politician would be allowed to speak critically about Israel's war in Gaza. But a spokesman for the uncommitted national movement said their request was turned down. Abbas Alaway, an uncommitted delegate from Michigan, relayed the news outside the United Center when the convention concludes on Thursday. We were hopeful because Vice President Harris's team was engaging with us. Mr. Alaway told reporters, we just want to be heard. Now, Kamala's speech attacked Iran, and she also said that, and I quote, I will ensure America always has the strongest, most lethal fighting force in the world, signaling that she will be strong in the military. But if you ask me, she sounded like a hawk. The DNC, I mean, they tried to say the right things. I mean, the Democrats even. I mean, they called for a ceasefire, uh, a two-state solution. Now, look, if you, if you ask me, given that Kamala Harris was the first to call for a ceasefire, I thought maybe she's like slightly, and I mean slightly, better on this issue than Joe Biden. Although, to be fair, it's not really hard to be better on Israel, Palestine than Joe Biden. Or anything. But the DNC ignoring Palestinian voices, I mean, that's disgraceful. She also, in her speech, attacked Iran because they're in conflict with Israel rather than trying to be like a diplomat. She sounds incredibly pro-war. Um, oh. Sneaker, I mean, did the DNC confirm that there will be no change on this if Kamala Harris were to win the election? It's, it feels like an exact mirror of what we were seeing from Keir Starmer ahead of the mm. election. It was just, there's no commitment. Um, the thing of like talking down Iran and like saying to Iran, like, this is going to be a really bad move, you know, and like demonstrate it's so brazen now to have like Keir Starmer did it as well. He called Iran to be like, you need to show restraint in this situation. Like, this whole idea of like, oh, all of a sudden we can tell people not to do crazy things in the Middle East. I didn't know we had that capacity. When did we start? Because it was a very delicate situation before. It was very complicated, I thought. But now, actually, when it's Iran, you can be like, you better fucking not do anything in back for what's happening. It just, it feels like playing nicey-nice until they get into power. I don't see any any viable commitment from it now. And I actually think for the US, one of the biggest fears that they have right now is that they've enabled to a point where even if they did withdraw support, like they don't have that. I don't. I don't think Israel would back down on any of it. So I feel like they're having to play this, like again, play a game of pretending that they're not telling them not to do it, but also not really. Like they have to. They have to stay by their man at this point. Like they've made their bed, but it's just so frustrating to see people do this nicey nice. Oh well, we hear you. Yeah, there's room for everyone. It's like people are like literally so many people have died now, and you can't fucking buckle up. I don't know. I feel quite angry about it. <laughs> uh, but but to, to completely silence the voices of Palestinians because there there's Palestinian uh, uh, American elected officials. Because it's embarrassing they for to, them. They were trying to yeah. I mean, obviously we know why because it's it's you're gonna you would have a Palestinian American official saying Israel sucks, but you've got the DNC and like we're still pretty pro Israel. It is embarrassing for them, but all that goodwill that Kamala Harris sort of built up during the campaign. I mean, I know when she had a heckler in one of her speeches and she said, oh, I'm speaking now. I was like, oh, that was so badly handled. But then like the next day, the same thing happened. And then she goes, OK, I'm actually going to listen to you. She had given some reassurances or at least had been willing to listen to the uncommitted movement. But all that goodwill seems to be washed away, given that they've ignored Palestinian voices, given that Kamala Harris is like, like you've got to remember, right? Barack Obama um, did the nuclear deal with Iran. So they gave up their nuclear weapons and we had to deal with them. Donald Trump scrapped that, right? An abomination of a policy, what Trump did there. Uh, Obama, who I think is terrible, generally, and terrible in foreign policy, did a really good thing with Iran. Now, I want a president to be diplomatic and say, well, maybe we should go back to the uh, Iran nuclear deal, something like that. But no, because they're in conflict with Israel, we have to be strong on, on Iran too. Uh, uh, Callum, I want to bring you in on this one. I mean, what do you make of this? I mean, this is this is a very hawkish pro-war Kamala Harris. And what's dangerous is, even though Donald Trump is absolute an absolute <laughs> hawk as well, and he is absolutely worse on Israel, Given that RFK Jr. has joined his campaign and that, you know, the, the rhetoric is that we're anti-war. Again, a lot of bullshit, 
But what worries me is the rhetoric here is that you've got Kamala Harris saying all these things, saying that we're going to have the most lethal military in the world. And you've got Trump's side saying, well, we're anti-war here. Yeah, I, I don't get it. I really don't. <laughs> I just don't understand it. And I think... <sighs> I want to be care- I want to be careful what I say because I don't want to I don't want to like unintentionally promote any terrible conspiracy theories or anything. Um, but I, I I I I genuinely I genuinely have to wonder what is stopping both whether it's the Democrats, the American government as a whole, the British government, like what what it is that is stopping them from being able to call a spade a spade and just call this shit out for what it is and to actually take a stance. Is it trade? Is it money? Is it is it dodgy deals? Is it that Netanyahu has information on them? Like there's got to be something because at this point with so many dead it just seems when you've got the Labour Party and you've got the Democrats, the, the the very people that you would expect would be able to call out what's going on and what Israel are doing and to, to you know, stand up for Palestinians and to actually try and de-escalate as much as possible in the Middle East. For those very people to be the ones basically saying, well, we're just going to we're just going to keep being mates with you and we're going to keep patting you on the back. And oh, yeah, that's a bit naughty that, you know. Thousands more dead or oh, terribly bad, but here's some weapons to kill them with, and here's some more money to put in your back pocket. I, I, I genuinely do not understand it, um, and I just think of that. Um, is she, was she a senator, congresswoman, um, who those images of her with the sign um, when Netanyahu uh, spoke in Congress? Um, is it uh, Russia to leave? Yes. Did I get yeah. the name wrong? Um, uh, Congress. Woman, yeah, with the with the sign that said "war criminal," and I think on the other side yeah. said um, uh, something like um, "perpetrator of genocide" or something along those lines. I've got it here, but um, have managed to have it taken away from me as I was looking at it because my screen switched off. Uh, yeah, "war criminal" and "guilty of genocide" is what it said on the other side. Um, and I just think, and that was that was one lone voice while everyone else was doing a stand innovation and 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 a round of applause. Um, she was there with that sign and I think again like what we were saying with with Labour earlier on I don't I don't understand it politically I mean most most polls that I've seen show I think I think it's the same in the US that the majority of people are actually supportive of Palestinians and want to see the the fighting the genocide end um, and want to see Israel held to account. Yet Democrats are, are just going full steam ahead with, yay, Israel, despite, what is it, 40,000 now, more? She's she's doing the same thing as, um, as Keir's done here, I think. I think trying to ignore the story, like everything that we've heard out of their mouths is like, well, well, we hope that the violence comes to an end we think violence is bad but like she's received half a uh, half a million from the from apac um and it's so like i think that's why they've ignored them completely i don't think we were supposed to see them being ignored because the game is that we all pretend that we've listened and we've taken feedback and we're all sharing ideas together but if they actually sorry hit my microphone if they actually shared the feedback they'd have videos of people saying like my family have been killed by your bombs again like it's like there's so they 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 have to pretend that they're listening because otherwise they're not going to get the rest of the votes but there's no way they're backing off on this now it's like biden said before like if israel didn't exist they'd have had to create it like there is so much invested in israel from them at this Mm. point and realistically if if they allow israel to be stopped in this like if it comes before the icc or the icj America is complicit in war crimes, like, and they know that. So it's the same fucking shit. It's like J.K. Rowell of like, we have to just keep doubling down now because there's no way out of this. If we suddenly stop halfway through a genocide and say, you know what, my, our bad, we should have done more to stop this, they are they're admitting culpability. So it's just gonna it's gonna get ignored and ignored, and it'll slowly drop off the news cycles. And meanwhile, people are going to continue getting killed at this rate. Do you think that's? Do you think that is that is the why to the question I asked earlier in terms of why they're doing this? Do, do you think it is a, a case of well, they're in so deep now 
that like you say they they can't actually call it out for what it is because if they do they have to admit that they've contributed to it i think so out sooner i think the amount that they have done like they have acted explicitly as an ally support and enabler to a full on for to one of the worst genocides that we we're, we're because gonna surely see. The, surely the best way out of that is to say like I mean, I suppose new information uncovered. Well, I was going to say, you know, we had the wool pulled over our eyes. You know, we were gaslit, whatever, and we've now realized. But they can't. It's been but, so but documented. Exactly. It's it's not even that they, they they can pretend that the 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 evidence hasn't been out there because for months we have been seeing what's actually been going on, and it's been verified. Yeah. It's not just it's not just a random video on social media every now and then. It's like it's it's really like well. Um, well established. It's the most well documented genocide well, that we've well, seen. Well, um, uh, sort of highly regarded journalists as well that have verified this stuff and said, "Yeah, actually, this is really what's going on." That's it. Well, I, mean, I mean, that's the thing. That's why we're seeing less and less of it in the headlines. Like, when did Keir Starmer last make a statement on on Palestine? He didn't. The last one that he spoke about was asking Iran not to do anything back. Like the they can't address those things at this point. Yeah, but secrets, so they're just going to yeah, not but, talk about but, it. But, but but they can't talk about it because some billionaires went down in a shipwreck in in Sicily. So oh my fucking god, that shipwreck! Um, but it, it, it but it is that sort of thing, isn't it? It's like it's that thing of well, all right, normal normal people are being killed, but um, let's let's look over here because something bad. They're just going to wait. By the way, I, think... I just to, sorry, just to preface like. Yeah. The, um, I'm not. I'm not downplaying a, a horrific accident that took place in, in, you know, off the coast of Italy. You know, I'm. I'm. It's appalling what what happened to them. But I mean, we 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 put a lot. You know, we the the media spend all this time focusing on. You know, the billionaire. It's like you were talking again about J.K. Rowling. You know, the billionaire does something, and it's headline news. Forty plus thousand people being slaughtered in a by a, a deliberate uh, regime from Israel. And it's kind of like, oh, we've talked about that too much now. Let's just let's just move on. Can I? Yeah. Can I say what what I think they're going to do is what the US did with apartheid, and like what happened, like same as like many other genocides that have happened. Like people seem to think that like it's not like every time that there's a genocide, it's like the only like we were all shocked and we couldn't see it coming and we didn't know what was going to happen. But there are always loads and loads of steps that lead up to it, and I feel like when like the US was not supportive of apartheid being like coming to an end it, in, in the beginning like they wanted to keep it working because there were financial interests there over time they started to offer like words of support but they didn't actually put any sanctions on they were just like we hope that apartheid comes to an end and then kept funding it and kept working with organizations that were benefiting off of it and then now they take credit for having supported the fall of apartheid and I feel like what we're seeing with all of these words, these pointless words from political leaders of like, well, we want the suffering to stop. It's cover for 20 years from now when this is in like history books to be able to say, God, yeah, it was terrible. It was awful. They just it's just putting the words out there with no action. They could take action. I mean, and what would have to happen? What would have to happen for Kamala Harris and Democrats to change their tune on this? Like how bad would it need to get? Like what? There's, I mean, I mean, I, there, there there isn't. Um, I don't think there's an, there isn't. And, how bad? I mean, yeah. I wanted to pick up actually, Callum, on, on something you said earlier, which is that I mean, does Netanyahu have something on the US or what, what's this financial? They have everything um, they've done in Israel. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I suppose, but Callum, you you're kind of saying like, why is America still supporting Israel. Is there something behind this? Is there a financial reason? And the reason why is the same reason as to why Israel Israel was created in the first place. It's an imperialist project, right? Mm -hmm. America mm -hmm. and the UK wants to have Israel in the Middle East, so we have influence what happens there, whether it's trade, whether it's just pure imperialism. It's a material reason, but also it's an ideological one. Right. Our, pol our politicians learn from older politicians. Those who get elected, get elected into the current system. There are obviously outliers who want to try and change the system, but a lot of them are moulded to the current system. And this current system has existed for hundreds of years in the, in the context of America. And that system is of imperialism. So 
that's exactly why America will back Israel to the hilt. It's because America believes in the Zionist project. They want to have Western allies in the region. That's essentially what it is. And they're putting imperialism and they're putting financial um, uh, obligations over human life in Palestine. And that's what it is. And, th and it kind of answers your sort of second question, which is well, what will it take for Kamala Harris or the Democrats or whoever to change course? They can't. They cannot change. There isn't one particular thing. I mean, look, we, we said, oh, a hundred people, uh, sorry, a thousand people have been killed from Israel and some and 50 percent of them were children. Did that stop the West? No, it didn't. Ten thousand people were killed. Did that stop the West? No, it didn't. Forty thousand people have now been killed. And that's a conservative estimate where 50 percent of them are probably children, where babies are getting blown up. Right. Where hostages, mm -hmm. the hostages are being killed by Israeli strikes isn't enough. And there will never be a number that's essentially, oh, well, that's this is the threshold now. I guess that genocide is too much. It will never end. The only way it ends is the way how uh, apartheid in South Africa end, which is people power and pressure. Mm -hmm. It comes from the bottom. And this one is, um, this is going to be a long journey. This isn't going to yeah. end in the next few months. It might not end in, in the next few years because we have the most powerful country in the world, America, invested in a political project, which is Zionism, which is imperialism. And it just so happens that our ally mm -hmm. is the beholder of that Zionist project. And America doesn't want to let that go. It doesn't matter if 50% of the Palestinian population is wiped out. And do you think it's easy to ignore because it's it's one state? Well, I know that, that not everyone recognizes Palestine as a state, but is it? Do you think it's easy to make excuses because it's 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 this it's Israel against Palestine? Whereas if Israel were doing this to their own people in their own country, were actively you know killing people on the street next to them, then that's harder to justify than saying, oh well, actually we're defending ourselves against the enemy that's over that way i mean that's a that's a good question i mean i could totally see um that being ignored and i could see the media trying to cover it up because i mean i mean often historically when when genocides have, have taken place uh, very often but not always they've they've happened within their own area so i mean if we look at the ongoing genocide of the uyghur population in china for example mm. it's people within china and it's the chinese government that are doing it um, you know, I mean, obviously, the, the famous one that, that we're never allowed to talk about, even though the comparisons are there, is the Holocaust and what happened in, mm. in Germany. But again, that was that was the German government against German citizens. It, it, I mean, Whereas for me, this it, is, it all depends. This, is, can, this can be sort of this can sort of be brushed off as a war because it's it's it's. An That's what I mean. It all depends on our yeah. allies, doesn't it? Because obviously, for the for the Uyghur genocide, the West can talk about it because China isn't our, our ally. And I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad. I mean, the media doesn't cover it that much, but I'm glad the West is against that. But that's because they're not our ally. If Israel were to commit war crimes against its own people, I don't think America or the West would be condemning it. I mean, we've, I know it's on a far smaller scale, but we're seeing Jewish people and Israelis taken to the streets and um, protesting mm -hmm. against the genocide. And Israel and the state are responding by violence, by attacking these people. And yet you haven't heard a single word from Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Keir Starm, or anyone else saying, well, we condemn Israel attacking their own population because it's our ally. And obviously you've got mm. people online saying, well, they're the wrong type of Jew. Um, essentially, it doesn't matter. No matter what Israel does, whether it's to Palestine, whether it's to Iran, or whether it's their, to their own people, we won't call it out because they're our ally and because the west believes in the zionist project that's mm. essentially what it is if russia does something bad we rightly call, condemn Strict their sanctions genocide. of course we sanction them but if and it's we israel it we continue to sell arms to them so if there was another country that was our ally and started doing some terrible things it would take us a very 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 long time to condemn it or never um yeah. because it, it it matters who our friends are that that's it that's why you see the clear, blatant double standard with our government, our media and liberals when it comes to Russia, Ukraine and Israel, Palestine. Liberals are saying this, it's, you know, partially good things on rhetoric about Russia, Ukraine. 
okay, then, well, if you support Ukraine against an imperial power, power of Russia, then surely you support Palestine against an imperial power of Israel. And suddenly, the script mm. changes. Well, it's, yeah, I think the really, yeah, the, the stressful thing at this point is that the only thing that will stop is when, like, Israel decides to stop it. Like, they decide to stop. And there may potentially be an out for the US and the UK mm. in our complicity by saying this was just the actions of Israel. We had no idea how bad it was. But it's pretty obvious that we know how bad it is. Um, it's hard, it's we, hard to deny it in in a in a world that's you, massively people, taken over by social media, where people are. This this is this is the first this is the first genocide of its kind to literally be live streamed as it's taking place. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's blatant that the like I think the mask is slipping so hard on the West, especially for a lot of younger people, especially for a lot of people who were maybe less political before. It's what's really disgusting at this point is like the way that everyone's agreed to just not talk about it anymore now. Like, and that's what we're seeing. That's what we're seeing in media coverage. You can look at like BBC coverage is dropping. Like, there are very few outlets are still actually discussing it in the context of so what are people actually saying. When we were condemning, when we're in the condemn phase, October to November, every single news outlet was talking about 24-7 whilst they were spreading misinformation mm, they yeah, can't correct point. it they can't correct that misinformation they can't talk about what's actually happening because there's nothing left to defend so the decision is just that we don't talk about it anymore yeah like because the tide has has, has turned on popular opinion that's yeah when we came out of that sort of condemned stage the media couldn't then platform or talk about the issue just as much when majority of people are like well this is fucked up it is Oh, we just need to sort of ignore it now. We and there was to... a sort of period, I guess, for those people who weren't engaged in the Zionist project or Israel Palestine were like, well, we completely support Israel because they have a right to defend themselves. And it's like, even people who aren't that politically engaged thought that for about six weeks. And then they realized, mm. look what Israel's doing in response. Now, for us, we knew what was going to come. Um, we expected this. But for those that were politically engaged, it didn't take them long. A majority of people in most countries completely support Palestine. Um, I mean, now, look, to sort of say to... that the, the, the okay. mask is slipping on the West, well, I think that mask has been removed for a very long time. I mean, well, for us, right? But well, I mean, like multiple generations have never trusted the West. I mean, think of the Iraq War, for example. I think that was a that was almost a pinnacle moment of when the mask slipped. So, I think multiple generations have grown up. Our parents have grown up in. In not trusting the West. The problem is, though, is um, it can then lead you to sort of supporting autocrats and other dictatorships and other countries such as China or Russia. And it's like, mm, okay, well, just because American imperialism bad doesn't mean that other forms of imperialism isn't also bad. But th that is a completely separate subject. I just wanted to say on the um, on the topic of, of confessions from Callum, as it seems to be, as someone pointed out <laughs> earlier today. Um, you know, I I. Uh, I've been politically engaged for a while, but I avoided even even discussing what was happening in Israel and in Palestine for a long period of time because I had people on one side telling me one thing, people on the other side telling me another. I saw I saw hundreds of people within the Labour Party being accused of anti-Semitism for even speaking out about it, and equally people on the other side being accused of Islamophobia for speaking out about it. And I just I just sort of wrongly. Um, made a decision that I was just going to stay away from it. Um, but it's interesting what you say about, you know, the way that people sort of woke up to it almost after what happened on October 7th, because in the 12 months leading up to that, I'd already made a decision to do a bit more research into what was going on. Um, and even at that point for me, it was obvious what was happening when I actually made the effort to look into it um, and 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 not hide away from it anymore. But I think there were so many people who had done exactly what I'd done, who would try to, who would just sort of hidden away from it for a bit, sort of put it to the side, thinking, well, if I don't think about it, then it's not happening. Which is a really, really awful position to take when people's lives are, you know, are being taken. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not proud of myself for not looking into this uh, sooner. However, a lot of people saw what happened on October 7th and went, that's really bad, and then watched Israel's response to that in the weeks and the months that followed. And very quickly, I think it became obvious to pretty much anybody and everybody what the past 75 years had been about, because it was like, well, hang on a second, actually, 
yeah, what happened then was was terrible. It was an appalling atrocity. Um, you know, it should be condemned. But what's happened since has mm. just been so out of proportion in any form of of self defense or you know even 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 in even in normal warfare right when you've got when you've got two states going at each other a response of getting on for 12 months now to the level that we've seen from israel to an individual attack that happens at the beginning of october last year like we we wouldn't see a response like this in any other war in any other form of self defense anywhere else in the world mm-hmm. yet we we're, we're supposed to just believe that 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 still you know the people that are killed today on the 25th of august it's oh well it's because those pesky palestinians and and the, they're the not even trying Arabs anymore did something in october it's like really yeah to what to, to circle it back to kamala harris then because oh yeah I mean, <laughs> this is really an interesting sort of where we we let down with this but um to, to circle it back i mean callum or, or do you think that there could be a difference do you think that kamala harris is maybe uh willing to push a bit further on israel or would you say you agree with me that especially after the dnc there is going to be zero difference Whatsoever. I think the jury's out. And one of the reasons I say that is because the Democrats need to win the next election. I don't think they're going to, but... F- you don't f- think they're going to win the the election? I, 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 I still think Trump could, could get it. I really do. And I don't want to be... Um, I don't want to be blase about it, given mm. um, what happened last time. And I think we we really need to... Look, I'll, I I will breathe a sigh of relief if 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 Kamala Harris becomes the next um, sure and at least a prime minister the, the next president of the United States. Um, and you know what? It's for for many reasons it will be a brilliant thing historically as well. Um, you know, she'll be the first woman. She'll be the first woman of color. Um, you know, and it will mean that we don't have to endure um, at least for now another term of Donald Trump. That said, I I do believe that that Trump could still win this election. Um, and the way that the way that the, the Republicans and the Trump campaign have essentially been telling people not even to bother voting because we don't need the votes um, scares me and makes me yeah. question what else the what other cards they're planning on playing. And again, I don't want to get down rabbit holes and into a load of nonsense, but um, I, I I think this election's. I don't think this election's going to be played fairly at all. And I think that the Democrats need to be very careful in how they fight this election. That said, um, some people made the same argument about the Labour Party in the UK, um, expecting Keir Starmer to suddenly come out and and be the pro-Palestinian socialist that he is, that he clearly isn't. So let's see. But I, I do think that the election is is playing a part. And I think actually, if if this was happening hmm. four years ago. Um, I think we may have seen a different response from the Democrats than what we're seeing now. Um, and I think that the election is definitely playing a part. So I, I would say the jury's out because um, they need to win an election. And while with voters um, being pro-Palestine and, and actually calling out genocide might be the right thing to do, in order to get the media on side, in order to get the the backing mm. of the people that you need to back you if you want to an election on side, then you need to be supporting Israel. And I think it's it's exactly what we saw happen in July with um, with the Labour yeah. Party. Um, and I think the Democrats are, are, are trying to play it safe. I mean, um, some whether, people whether have tried. To, is... Some people have sort of tried to defend Kamala Harris, and it was a it was an argument I sort of bought for a while, which is. She can't say too much because she's still the vice president and Joe Biden mm-hmm. is still the president. It's it's when um, people attack her and say, well, why can't you get this thing done or that thing done? Remember, she's not president. She's the vice president. And she kind of has to maybe toe the line with what Joe Biden was saying. I kind of bought that for a while. But really, the DNC, especially the last day, has completely made me change my view because it wasn't just like we're going to try and coast through it. 
it was really hardline, I, I felt. And again, ignoring Palestinian voices, uh, attacking Iran, saying that we're going to have the biggest, most lethal military in the world. It signaled to me that they weren't coasting it and just trying to sort of like, I don't know, um, tr- skirt around this, it kind skirt of thing. around walk this complex tightrope because Biden is still technically the president. No, it was. It looked like it was fully leaning into uh, being pro-war and being a hawk. So I... Um, Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I expect Kamala Harris to win. I'm, I'm confident in that. Um, but I, I think there is going to be zero, zero difference when it comes to Israel Palestine. We could potentially see the, t- uh, the Netanyahu is forced to step down because, I mean, he is, he may be himself personally, sort of, um, being out of favor with a lot of Western leaders. I mean, we know that I mean, David Lamy and yeah. Keir Starmer is, is said they would back the ICC if they were to issue an arrest warrant for Netanyahu. And that caused Netanyahu to literally ignore um, David Lamy. <laughs> but if you replace also, Netanyahu, you're just going to uh, replace... Um, it's going to... Well, but that's the what they've already decided policy. is the line, isn't it? The discussion yeah. is now... The whole acceptable line that we now have is basically going back to what we had pre-2008 in Palestine of like, we actually want a a two-state solution and the PLO or another kind of moderate, aka group that we can keep control of will be in charge. And everybody's just going to have to move on from the fact that we did a whole genocide on you. And like they, you can already, we already know what the line is because we saw it in July. Like we're going to see the exact same thing in the US. Like it's not going to, like they can't, they can't back out on it now like Someone, from their perspective yeah. they have to come down hard on people if they if they protest or disagree because it's too obvious how fucked it is i'm excited to say that turn left has significantly grown this year and with that we've managed to produce far more ambitious content interviewing high profile people we did a 12 hour live election show there are multiple people behind turn left but we are still working around our full time work but we would love it if this was our full time It means we could dedicate so much more and to bring even more ambitious content. So if you've been here from the beginning or you've only recently become a viewer, if you like what we do, then you can help us out. Please like and share this video. Make sure you drop a comment. We want to hear your thoughts. We want to hear your feedback. And we desperately need more independent media. If you want to see a socialist media alternative thrive, then you could be part of that. So if you can, you could support us on Patreon for three or five pounds per month, or any one-off donation. We can use that money to upgrade our equipment, to rent out a proper studio, and to start paying ourselves. This is only the beginning. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Patreon.com, Turn Left Media. Support independent media. Support social justice that's there on social media. Thank you, Turn Left.